Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I have another excerpt from a live stream where a question popped up from the audience about how to use multiple Terraform provider blocks for the Azure provider. Now, I could have just answered the question and just gone into the technical details about using multiple providers and uh, using the alias and things like that. But one of the things that I learned from consulting is to sometimes see past the initial question to what the underlying problem statement is that they're trying to solve. And if it's not readily apparent, to ask probing questions to delve into that. But today you'll see me do this both answering the initial question and delving deeper into strategies that might help them solve their underlying problem of managing shared infrastructure across a multi-subscription landscape within Azure. Anyways, let's get right into All right. it. So uh, Maz, Maz says, I'm currently working on a Terraform project where I need to manage resources across multiple Azure subscriptions. Okay. Yes. Very. So say we all. Very, very common thing. To achieve this, I'm considering defining multiple provider blocks in my Terraform configuration, each corresponding to a different Azure subscription. My plan is to store the subscription IDs in terraform.tfrs and reference them. Dan Kitch, what's up? Yes, Dan Kitch, my, my dude. Store subscription IDs in terraform.tfrs file and reference them in the provider configurations. This is the correct approach. So I, I did a, I did a video on is my subscription a secret? Because I think somebody was like, people like I don't know, like infosec or somebody was like spanking them for putting subscription IDs in their in their source code files or something like that. And it's like. Yes, that's okay. You can put your subscription IDs in your in your source code files. Um, let me thumbs up, Dan Kitch. It works well. Yes, and it uh, so as a as a technical practice, like it's totally okay to do, totally okay, because the subscription ID is not like sen sensitive, like a password. Um. It is, it's like a mailing address, right? So it's kind of like your, your home address. Um, it's not the keys to your house. So nobody can like just walk in your front door, but like they kind of know where you live. So you probably don't want to like post that out on the public interwebs. Um, but if you have a private Git repository in your private enterprise, like you can do that. That's fine. Um, just just be aware that it's there and you might want to call it out like that. I don't know, put it in the documentation in that file or in the readme.md. Um, if your organization makes practice of like also publishing stuff on the interwebs, I've seen, I've seen like government organizations like uh, try and take advantage of, I think somebody wanted me to code review this huge mono repo for like the department, some government entity within the UK. And they sent me like, and it's like thousands of lines of code. I'm like, I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to code review this entire government agency's like Terraform code base. But this government agency like used GitHub Actions for free because all of their code was in a public GitHub repo. And technically, like that doesn't like if you're writing Terraform modules the right way, you're not going to be divulging you know internal information. Right. Um, however, like there are like uh, security guys will be like, OK, if this is on the public Internet, you probably don't want to put in uh, pri even private IP addresses or subscription IDs because that is more information that a potential that a potential bad actor will have if they do get access to your and like get past, you know, the, the network boundary. Right. Um, or they get a credential then they have more information so that they can move like laterally within the organization, which so less information for bad actors, the better. Um, but uh, if it's in a private repo, you're probably, you're probably fine. Um, now I would also say um, building multi provider based Terraform modules is not a super great path to high code reusability. If that makes sense. So 
Um, you might want to think about the topology of your module graph, if that makes sense. Like what should be the root module? And then how can you shield submodules from the complexity of being aware of multiple provider definitions, right? So if you can scope a module to, as soon as you can scope a module to an individual provider declaration, do it. Because the complexity of managing different provider aliases within a single module is is it's very it's laborious it's a very laborious right so um but it's very common in like a root module um you will likely have multiple provider blocks in that root module especially for for like these cross organizational uh code bases policy as code is a great example of that like when you're working with management groups um you know, and applying policy at the management group or at the subscription level, you're going to have like a root module that has fingers in multiple pies. But it's when you, as soon as you like find a way to make code reusable, you want to encapsulate that and scope it as narrow as possible, like to a single subscription. So think about that. Um, I haven't seen your code, you, you know, if it's something that you can share, like a GitHub URL to, happy to do a code review. Um, of course, code ninjas like Dan Kitch get first in line. Uh, so Dan, haven't seen a code review from you recently, so uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to look at. Um, but uh, yeah, happy to do code reviews. Um, again, first come, first serve. Code ninjas get first priority. Um, and uh, Probably, probably a little bit more attention, a little bit, uh, a little bit faster uh, turnaround time, because uh, I I do have a full time job, um, and Maz says regarding the module reusability aspect you mentioned earlier, I plan to use a key vault module to create two key vaults in different Azure subscriptions with the following code. Okay, so we got module. I, I could throw this up into like a temp window so that you guys can actually see it. So this is Maz's code here. He just threw this into Discord chat. Okay, so you can see how he's setting providers here um, for his sub one and sub two. And he says, would you recommend a different approach for creating these re resources using a module? Using the module. Hmm. Well, I, you know, you got you got to ask yourself, um, do you want both of these key vaults in the same Terraform apply? Should they be in the same state file? That's that's question one. Um, are these key vaults kind of a separate? Is like is the um, footprint for whatever these key vaults are being used for going to expand beyond the key vault, right? Um, I, I'm assuming these key vaults for these subs is some sort of like shared infra for at the sub level that people that are in, in that sub are going to all share and use. And are there going to be other shared resources that are going to go in there? That would be my first question. Um, and if the answer is yes, um, I might think about um, how... I would broker change to those different subs in the future um, and bring updates to those environments um, and maybe have flexibility of opting not to push updates um, or to push updates, right? And so if you, if you provision like th this approach right here is like, all right, I'm uh, the, it's a highly efficient at just pumping out key vaults to as many subs as you want, right? Um, but it, um, you know, it's like if if there's if you want flexibility and variation, you know, you might want to have a simpler code base that's like 
like maybe a root module that just represents like, well, what should every sub have? What if, what should a subscript, what should every subscription in my organization have as kind of like baseline? And then think about maybe that's what the root, what, and you could, you could, you, you could still use a root module that provisions to all the places, right? Um, and it could be follow this format that we're looking at right here. Um, but then it's like, it's not just like key vault, right? It's like, okay, subscription stuff, like common baseline subscription deployment, right? And then inside there, that would include a key vault, right? Um, that would be something to think about. Um, and then depending on how many subscriptions we're talking here, right? You, you might want to think about, okay, um, how is this going to scale, right? Okay. Right now it's two subscriptions. What, like, will it ever be a hundred? Um, when you start talking big numbers like that, it's like, I mean, is this, what, what is this code? What is this code base going to look like when we get to that scale of an organization? Um, and how, how, how would it, how would managing this code base look like in that case? And then, then you might want to think about, um, back to, do I want to force updates? Like if I change the content of that, let's say instead of using a key vault module, I've got a baseline subscription module that day one will have a key vault, but day two might have other things. Right. Um, that baseline subscription module, um, do I want to force updates to all of my users? So if I add something, uh, to that ba that baseline subscription module, do I want all my users to get that update? Right. And if you set up a pipeline to provision that for each subscription, right now, now each subscription has its own workspace for its baseline environment. So every subscription has its own state file, um, its own root, its own instance of the root module, right? Essentially. Um, and you can use feature branches and git git flow process to manage pushing change to those environments. So that will allow you better coordination with those teams that are in those environments. Cause a sub, a, you know, a sub can be a small place with very few people working in it, or it could be a very big place with lots of people working in it. And so if you, if you take the approach that you're showing right here, you know, if there's a lot of people in those subs and this infrastructure, the shared infrastructure in the sub gr grows and gets more complex, we probably want to have more control over how we manage that change to the teams that are operating in those subs. So, um, that does require some additional boilerplate. Like you're probably thinking, gee, golly, Mark, that would mean I would have to have, you know, an Azure DevOps pipeline for sub one, sub two, sub three, sub four. Yeah. Um, and well, who's going to create all those pipelines? Well, you can check out my Azure DevOps provider, right? Uh, my Azure DevOps modules that pump out pipelines. Um, so you don't have to go manually create these pipelines. Like we can use automation to create automation. And so if you have subscriptions that you want to onboard, you might want to have automation around that. So it's like, there's sort of this, uh, vending machine that will just, okay, I need a new sub spit one out, right? That sub needs to have these things in place day one, right? Let's, let's have that as part of the template. And that can get updated over time so that each subscription, you know, we can choose how fast we want to push the canonically approved enterprise, you know, standard configuration of this stuff out to each sub. And that gives us the ability to talk to that sub owner or the various teams that might be in that sub and let them know. Like the chain, here's the changes that are coming, you know, 
what what kind of impact is this going to look like to you? Here's the plan for your sub and your sub only. Um, and here's what this is going to do to your world. Uh, what do you think about that? Right. And having those conversations with with the teams that operate in those subs. And Maz says, normally we use a dedicated workspace for each subscription in our pipeline. However, we now have a requirement to manage resources across two subscriptions using a single workspace. Well, I would, I would ask, where is that requirement coming from? You know, like, yeah, that's, I would ask, where is that requirement? Like, is, is there some reason why you want to have two, like you want to manage two subscriptions in a single workspace? That's what I'd say. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a great question from Maz. Whenever I do live streams, I do encourage folks to come on to Discord. I do try and monitor YouTube, LinkedIn, and all the things. Um, until I get a little better with Restream, it might be a little bit difficult for me to monitor chat from a centralized location. Uh, something I got to look into, but I do have that Discord option open. It does make things a heck of a lot easier. So if you're not in the Azure Terraformer Discord, please hop on there. And next time I have a live stream, pop into that chat and ask your question and we'll take it live as it happens. It's a great way to engage with me, the Azure Terraformer, and uh, get your questions answered. Of course, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you because uh, I don't know everything and uh, nobody can. And anybody that says they do is lying. Anyways, these live streams are a lot of fun. I'm going to try and keep doing them. Uh, and I encourage you to join and ask your questions. Until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer. Signing off.